Hey, 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 we are in the last days of 2019, and the dawn of a whole new decade lies before us. And I, for one, am looking so forward to this new decade. I think the 2010s have been nothing but struggle for me. It's been a lot of challenges. But, you know what they say, it's always darkest before the dawn. And one thing that has kept me happy and in good spirits lately is my new obsession with The Sims. It's been just a lot of fun for me playing. It's a creative outlet as well. What's so creative about it? Well, one word. Build mode. Um... Two words. <laughs> Actually, I don't give a damn. I don't care how many words it is. Build mode. I fully support it. Yeah. I don't care about how many words it takes. I love build mode. I've always been creative with, you know, my hands in every art or every craft I could get them into. And I've always been a home decorating enthusiast, like, ever since way back when I was, like, 16 years old. And I used to work at a supermarket, and I'd duck into the break room on my 15-minute breaks with a cold soda and some of the fresh DIY and home and garden magazines off the rack so I could browse the houses and the new decorating styles and, and different kinds of do-it-yourself ideas. And as a writer, for a lot of years, I wrote for home and garden websites and magazines. And, you know, if I weren't a writer, I'd probably have been an interior decorator. I was that interested in it. So for me, build mode was very, very, very exciting aspect to The Sims, but since I tend to be crap at video games and computers, uh, I struggled at first to start learning it. And now, now that I'm writing Sims articles for Level Skip, which you can check out, I have a link below. I have all kinds of articles on all kinds of topics, and there's more coming every week. But I decided to do some building tutorials, and I want to start from square one. Because I started writing a few articles, I got a few drafts going, and every time I wrote one, I realized, well, what if they don't know how to do this, or what if they don't know how to do that? So I decided I wanted to go back and start with an article completely from square one. And these videos are just little added demos that go with those step-by-step -step articles to help people. So if you're more visual and you need to see it, you can see it on the video while you read the step-by-step -step on the page. Again, links are going to be below. And the way I see it, I can't be the only person on the planet coming to The Sims late like this. There still have to be other people out there like me who are new to The Sims or who maybe haven't been around since previous versions and they're first coming to The Sims 4. And like me, they're looking with help for some other things. And, and I know I struggle to find certain things because so many of the regular season players are so far past the basics that they rarely go back and go over them again. So I've been playing now since the spring. And, well, I'm getting more and more comfortable with the build mode, and I want to share what I've learned, and I'm hoping that challenges me to keep learning and improving. But this is too elementary for you. That's cool. You know, if you feel like you still have a lot to learn, but this is just way too basic, that's fine. Keep an eye out, because I plan to publish more and more articles and videos, and as I go, they'll get more and more advanced and cover different topics and methods and functions. So for now, let's go for those newbies, those total newbies, who are like I was just a few months ago, and they need the absolute basics. They just open build mode, and they don't know what the hell to do. So we're going to click on the tools, go into build mode, and as you can see right away, a whole bunch of different windows and, and panels and, and toolbars open up. So we're going to take a closer look at each one of those. The first one we're starting with is the upper left corner, which is information about your lot. And to start off with, we're only going to worry about residential lots, but you could actually change that to a commercial lot or to a public lot. So we won't worry about that for now. You can put in how many bedrooms and bathrooms the house is that you're building or remodeling. And it also tells you what the value of the lot is. It gives you three question marks on the bottom. These are where your lot traits would go. And lot traits are kind of fun to play with because they give your lot a little bit more personality. Like you give your lot fast internet or you can give your lot, make it haunted so that ghosts will appear every now and then. Uh, you, you can just mess around with these you can make it more conducive to whatever you're trying to do like if you want to have a gardener give your lot great soil if you like to have a lot of parties give your lot a party place vibe you can change those up anytime you want so that's something fun to to just start with then at the top of the screen on the other side you've got a whole bunch of other tools and first we're going to take a look at these arrows which allow you to go up and down so you can go up to the roof you can go to the ground level down to the basement no matter how many floors your sims home has i think the limit is for above ground to below ground, you can transfer up and down using these arrows. This is a one story house only, so we're gonna to stick to the ground floor and we're gonna look at the camera angles. And with The Sims 4, you have the choice of reverting back to The Sims 3 camera if you're comfortable with it, or you could use The Sims 4 camera. I tend to go back and forth between them. I'm more comfortable with the 4 camera, but the 3 camera helps you get certain angles you can't get with the 4 camera. But then there's another when you're in build mode box in there that you click and that gives you a bird's eye view. So you can look from the top down and that's good for designing layouts and laying out furniture and make sure you get it all exactly placed right. You can see there's a grid there to help you with that. 
This especially helps when there's really small rooms because it's hard to see when you have the walls up and you're trying to put pictures on the wall exactly where they're supposed to go because you can't fit the camera in there. But another thing that will help you with your angles and being able to see is this little symbol here that you can use to either put all the walls up or drop all the walls or go somewhere in between, which will put only the exterior walls up, but all the interior walls will be down so you can navigate more easily and see what's going on. And when you want to actually decorate, all you have to do is open up the bottom panel and that'll give you the menu of all the different items they have. It's like a catalog and you can click on, let's say we want to look at chairs, click on that and then you can scroll through, find a chair that you like. You see the little circles in the upper corner that tells you what game pack or expansion pack it came from. You click on the side and it'll give you all the colors and patterns that the item comes in. And once you choose one, just click on it. You don't have to hold the button down, but bring it to the room to the place where you want to put it and then click again to release it. And you can actually put several down by just keep clicking, clicking till you're done. And you can click select and that'll stop the chairs from placing. Now, if you click this little design tool, it looks like fanned out paint chips. And then you click on the object. It'll give you little swatches so that you can pick the different colors and patterns and change it right there. And let's say there's something in the room that you decide you want another one of you you want a duplicate object just click on the little eyedropper and then select the item you want the double of and then that double will come and then again you can just place it by clicking on the floor in the different locations and you get as many as you want and by doing that it'll bring you to that section of the catalog and it'll be highlighted to show the exact one that you've been choosing but you can change your mind at that point and choose a different one and when you decide oh my goodness i don't even like this of it you can use my favorite tool which is the hammer grab that sledgehammer on the top toolbar and then pound it and it gives you the most satisfying smash and just delete, delete, delete. If you want to move your furniture around, just click it again with that left mouse and then start clicking it with the right mouse. And the right mouse click is going to rotate it so that you can place it on an angle or caddy corner or in a different position. And I tend to try things at all different angles because you never know when something is just going to work and look good. You can use those colors and change up the colors in the room again. And change the look of the whole room without even moving or changing anything. Uh, you can use the same furniture, just different colors, different angles, boom, new decor. And let's see what tables can do. I'm going to go to my catalog down here. I'm going to click on the categories by item, and I'm going to click tables. And as you can see, we have a wide array of tables in different shapes and sizes. There are round ones, rectangular ones, square ones, enough to seat eight, enough to seat four. So just pick a table and put it out. And then you can pick some chairs and when you decide which kind of chairs you want hold them up to the table and as you go around the table you'll see they kind of snap and they kind of lock in like they'll just like set in place and you can click it to to put them there and do that around the table and all the tables and chairs will be functional together then you can also go and put items on the table like you can take a decorative item you can stick it on the table and as soon as you get it near the table you'll feel it's like you're not even it's almost like a magnet it seems to pull the item and snap it into place and then you can let it go and that's where it will stand there are a few points on every surface where you can actually put a an item an object so it kind of locks in and other types of functional items that your sims can actually use will do that like computers are a good example because your sim needs to use the computer it needs to be in a specific place it won't sit on the floor, you can't put a computer on a, on a couch. You have to put a computer on specific surfaces where you could sim can use it and interact with it. And as soon as you hover that computer near that table or desk or counter where your sim is going to sit, it'll lock right into place there. And the cool things about the way these objects interact is that once you actually do get them set into place, say you decided you wanted to move the dining room area or the desk area, you could just pick up the whole lot of them will come together now when you grab the table and it'll bring the chairs, it'll bring whatever's on the table along with it. Now let's say you want to do something like change your floor color or style. Maybe instead of wood, you want carpeting or linoleum. You can go into the build tools and click on that little platform for floor patterns and once you get that you will have different types of floor patterns that you can look at and just like with the couches and the furniture and stuff it shows you the colors that it's available in if you click on the side and choose one that you like now to apply it to one square on the grid just click directly on it you can apply it to several squares by dragging the mouse so you're kind of like painting it on and if you want to really get a room done quickly all you have to do is click shift and the entire room will be covered in the same flooring 
So hold down your shift key and then click with your left mouse button. Boom, done. Changing the walls works the same way. You go to the panel on the side of the house, you click wall patterns, and then you have your choice between paint, paneling, brick, uh, wallpaper, pick one that you like. You can just click on one part of the wall to color one panel. You can drag it across several panels of the wall to cover several of them, or hold down shift, click, bang. All walls in the room, done. Now let's say you want to make more walls. Let's say you wanted to make a wall dividing two rooms or you want to create another room or move walls around. You just gotta open the wall build tools, which you click the front of that house or you can press B and that's a shortcut on your keyboard. Select the draw, you know, the wall tool to draw a wall. You just start it in one spot and it goes along the grid. So you would just drag it to where you want it to end and click again to let go of it. And there's your wall. And you can make another wall at a 90 degree angle. So you have a corner or you can make them at uh, 45 degree angles, it's up to you. It radiates out in eight different directions. And getting rid of a piece of wall, if you don't like it, is just as easy. You grab that hammer and bang, it's gone. And if you want to get rid of several panels of the wall, just drag it across and bang, they're gone. You can't use shift with this one though. And if you're not happy with the walls you built, you have other options than the hammer. You can just go to the undo arrows and you can undo the walls that you just built. And the undo will go back and pretty much it'll just keep retracing your steps. I haven't ever counted it, but for a pretty long time, I mean, you could do a lot and then undo a lot and just watch it. Bum, 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 bum. Everything you, you did is going in reverse and, and going back to the way it was. And I can go all the way back to the start here. So that's a pretty good tool. If you screw up, you don't want to leave build mode because it'll save it that way. So you just want to start undoing it and your problem is solved. And as items are either replaced or deleted, depending on the action you're undoing, that amount of money will be uh, added to or withdrawn from your household income, or I should say your household uh, savings. I wish I knew about undo when I accidentally destroyed my family's house. I had to have them move and I couldn't figure that out right away. So I'm just dense like that. But if you do a really major mistake, like, you know, delete your floor, like I just did, boom, just put it back with undo and it's done. And those are really the basic functions that you could do a lot with those and we'll leave it there. But I mean, we have barely scratched the surface. So I'm looking forward to getting more articles out there, more videos to demonstrate them that show step-by-step -step how to focus on one specific concept of building. And hopefully you'll learn little by little. I'll keep learning and getting better and we will have our Sims living in the laps of luxury. For now, I'm going to say good night though. Don't forget to check out my 100 Baby Challenge or my little offshoot series, which has like one episode left I'm trying to get together, which is uh, Marley and her brother Tucker checking out university and that's going to be over with soon, but it's fun. So take a look at it. Thanks for watching. Look out for my next build article and video if you're interested in learning how to build and have a really happy new year. Happy 2020s, you guys. Happy simming too. Good night.